ears to hear the voice of the Spirit. Give us understanding and depth. Remove all the obstacles and distractions out of our hearts and minds. We give you all the glory. Blessed Holy Spirit, welcome in this place. Touch our hearts anew. Make Jesus more real than ever. Deepen our walk with the Lord. In Jesus' name. God's people said amen. You may be seated. I want to talk to you tonight about the person of the Holy Spirit. For I believe when we capture and receive this truth, it will change our life. Thank you, Jim. When people think about the Holy Spirit as power or influence, they see him wrongly. He is a person. When people see him as power, then they want to use him. When they see him as a person, then they'll cry, Lord, use me. For a long time, I did not know the Holy Spirit as a person. I saw him wrong. Because our, our, the, the, the church I attended when I was young focused on the power and manifestations. And frankly, we saw almost none of those manifestations. It was sad that people in the church I had attended when I was young could not even recognize a true anointing. One young man who was a, a part of our fellowship group, we had a group that would meet Friday night, St. Matthew's Fellowship, we called it, and the young people would sit on the floor and play guitars and tambourines and worship the Lord. It was precious. But we all knew that that young man had a demon. He was always troubled mentally and would always tremble in a very strange way during the fellowship meetings. And we would pray for him that the Lord would help him. But not, you know, we did not know much we had most of us were just newly born again, and we did not know much about the demonic and the power of God. But we, we all knew that young man was very troubled. When I went to Catherine Kuhlman, I took him with us one time, and he was so afraid to come into that building, we kept him as long as we could at the door, and as the doors opened, he ran away, frightened. And I never saw him since. But during one of the meetings in church prior to that experience, when I took him with us on the bus to a Catherine Kuhlman service, believing God would set him free, because they, when, when I went to Catherine's meetings, I saw true deliverance. The power of God was real. In our church, we had noise. In her meetings, there was power. I remember a lady coming on the platform in her service at First Presbyterian Church 
who was so oppressed by demons. Her eyes were glassy, and, and you could see on her face she was bound by devils. And Catherine, in a beautiful way, just spoke and said, come out in Jesus' name on the platform. And that woman crumbled, just crumbled like that to the floor. And when she came up, her face was shining, tears flowing down her face. And Catherine looked at the crowd and said, that's the way Jesus did it. It was a powerful moment for me. And so I had taken, we took, some of us went on that bus. I had some of the young people with us from church on the bus. And that young man, we took him there. He drove with us all the way on the bus, seven hours. And we were all believing God would set him free that morning. And that poor fella, as the doors began to open, he was trembling violently. Demons were, were, were holding him. And you could see he was not natural. It was not the Holy Spirit. And he, he, and he began to make sounds with his mouth. And he began to... Uh, uh, like bite his teeth and stuff like that and he ran away and I never seen him since but in one of the meetings prior to that at church he began shaking again and all of us kids from the fellowship knew that was a devil not the Holy Spirit but the crowd around him wanted to take some of that anointing they thought on them and it was so sad watching people in church rubbing him and doing this to themselves how sad you see how people don't understand who the Holy Ghost is. Where, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty from the demonic. It was December 21st, 1973, 50 years ago, a few days ago. 50 years on the 21st of 2023. December 21st was only a few days ago was 50 years to the day when I met the Holy Ghost in her meeting. And I will never forget Ms. Kuhlman ministering the tremendous miracles happening. And suddenly she stood and began to weep. And she put her head down on her arm and began to sob with pain. You can hear her, the, the pain in, 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 her, in her cry. And now she looked up at the crowd and her face was beaming with power. Red, red, red face. She was on fire almost. And she began to beg the crowd not to grieve the Holy Spirit. I never heard anyone say that in any church. And then she said this. He's all I have. He's all I got. Those words are with me till the day God takes me home. Is all I have, is all I got. And I'm glued to every word, watching her face beaming with glory and the tears falling as she said those words. And then she said, he's more re real to me than you. And a cry came within my heart, Lord, I want to know you like this. I cried, Lord, I want to know you like this. We went home that day, seven-hour drive to go, to. Canada to Toronto, Canada. Physically, I was tired. And now I felt someone pulling me to pray. I was already in bed. I felt someone pulling me to my knees. And as I got on my knees, I, out of my lips, I, I heard myself say, Holy Spirit. And I didn't know whether I'm supposed to talk to him. No one had told me I could. But I said to myself, if I'm wrong, the Lord will correct me. And then I said, Holy Spirit, Catherine Kuhlman said, you're her friend. Now, Catherine didn't say those words. She just said, he's all I have, he's all I got. He's more real to me than you. But I understood that she knew him. And I said, Catherine said, you're her friend. Can I know you? And a few minutes went by, nothing happened. But suddenly, it was like a, a blanket came around me. I had my eyes closed. 
and I sense such an atmosphere of beauty and glory in my room. And I was literally, I felt like someone was holding me. And I thought to myself, or I had died and gone to heaven, or I'm back in Pittsburgh. Because that's what I felt in the service. But I opened my eyes and no one was there, but I could see. And that began a year of visitations in my life. The next morning, I opened my eyes without thinking of what I'd say and all I could say and all I heard myself say, good morning, Holy Spirit. And his presence came again. And for the whole year, it did not leave. I felt like I was walking uh, surrounded by a blanket of power and love. And that was the beginning. But I'll never forget that same morning, the 22nd of December of 73, that morning I said, I looked up and I said, would you please tell me who you are? And I heard someone, I heard someone say, turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And I did. That was the first time I ever saw this verse like I saw that morning. I'm sure I had read it before, but it just never made sense till that morning. And I read the verse, verse 9. As it is written, I had not seen 1 Corinthians 2, verse 9. Nor ear heard, now that have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. And then verse 10 came alive. It jumped out of the page. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. And it continued. This life was in these words that morning. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God. And what came so alive for me that morning are these words that we might know that things that are freely given to us. And suddenly the whole picture cleared up. Because I said, who are you? Please tell me. And I saw he is the spirit of God that knows God more than anyone, knows his depth. And he wants me to know what he has found. And then I said, Tell me about God the Father. That's how it started. Because when I read that scripture, it made it very clear that he searches the depth of God and reveals it to us freely. And I asked him, please tell me more. I want to know more about God Almighty. And that's how the journey began. Day after day. And I'm going to share with you here tonight the scriptures that I saw that came alive in my life that I had read prior but did not fully understand them because I began to understand the Holy Spirit is not an it. He is a person. <clears throat> and then, it was not that same day, but a few days later, I began reading every scripture I could find about the Holy Spirit to, to see who is he. And I saw John 14, verse 16 and 17, where the Lord says, And I will pray the Father, he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Now, I want to show you something. Come with me. When you and I get saved, the Holy Spirit immediately is with us. Not only in us, with us. And I did not know he was there. I was saved in 1972, February, February, 1472. That whole year, I did not know 
that he was walking with me everywhere I went. I did not recognize him. I did not pay attention to that fact. So let's take a walk. Come on. So everywhere I went, he came with me. But I did not recognize him. I did not even acknowledge him. So I went to school. He came with me. I went to the store. He came with me. I went to church. He came with me. And he's waiting all, all the time to be acknowledged. That's how some of you are. And it went on. And every day, he was there. Now, if I may add, he began to walk with me even before salvation to convict me that I need Jesus. He was there all the time. Before salvation, he comes. For Jesus said he will convict you of your sin. So think about someone like him who's been there, not just since 72, because when those young people were there at school telling them about Jesus, he was the one that is that was using them to convict me. But I didn't pay attention to him. So here he's been there probably from around 1970, because that's when I began to go to George Vanier. And now I'm ignoring him. I didn't know. Nobody told me I could talk to him. Before salvation and after salvation. But before I got saved, something marvelous happened. It was he who used every occasion and mean and people and so forth to bring me to the knowledge of the Lord. And one day I go to see a lady named Catherine Kuman. But he's been there all, all the time. The Holy Ghost has been there all the time. But I never acknowledged him. Even though he, he introduced me to the Son of God, I never acknowledged him. I thought he was tongues. I thought he was an emotion. I thought he was a vibration, not a person. Well, you don't talk to tongues. You don't talk to <laughs> feelings. You don't talk to vibrations and whatever else. You talk to a person. But I did not know him as a person. I thought he was only there as a power. Uh-huh. Because you don't talk to power. You talk to a person. So I'm in a service, and, and he's with me in the service. He's been with me ever since. Those kids in school came at me. He's the one who sent them anyways. And one day this, this lady said, the Holy Spirit, that she knew the Holy Spirit. I said, you can know the Holy Spirit? So that night I turned to him, and for the first time I addressed him. Prior to that, I said, Father, oh, dear Jesus. But I ignored him. And I didn't understand that he was the one that Jesus sent to take his place on earth. Imagine if Jesus was with you after he had risen from the dead, if he physically came to live with you, you would at least acknowledge him. I have news for you. He does live with you through his spirit. And one day, Ms. Kuban said, the Holy Spirit. And I thought, oh, I can talk to him. So I turned around and I said, Holy Spirit, she said, you're her friend. Can I know you? And finally, I heard him say, turn to 1 Corinthians 2 so you'll see who I am. But then I saw this. I saw that Jesus will give me another comforter to take his place. And I'm thinking, wait a minute. Jesus is not in my heart. He's in heaven. He hasn't left the throne yet. I've been saying all, all along, Jesus is in my heart. Jesus is in my heart. True. But physically, he did not leave the throne. He ascended on high. He sat at the right hand of the Father and still is seated. So the one in my heart 
whom I call Jesus, is the Holy Ghost. Who is he? Jesus without limit. That's who he is. As Anne, Billy Graham's daughter, said, Jesus without skin. I like that too. He's Jesus without skin. And I realized he's the one who's been there all the time. Keeping me for that moment. Protecting me from, from harm even when I was a child. And now finally we become friends. And I begin to discover over and over how much I need him. Because Jesus said, He's the spirit of truth that the world cannot receive, meaning I'm special. To have him, I am very important to God because the world cannot have him, but I can. He is not walking with anyone who, who is not a child of God. He's not walking with anyone who, who is not predestined to be a child of God. He's not convicting some people because they're not in the book of life. People don't get saved unless they're already in the book. That's what predestination means. God has chosen us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be his. So when God wrote the names of every saint in his book, it was written before the foundation of the world. Because Jesus said to his disciples, don't rejoice that you have power over devils. Rejoice that your names are written in the Lamb's book of life. And at that time, they were not saved. When Jesus spoke those words, they were not saved. He said, don't rejoice you have Power over devils, rejoice your names are written in the book of life. So God convicts only those who are in the book. No one outside the book is convicted. That's, I'm giving you the Bible. If you don't believe me, check it out. If I say something and the Bible says something different, I am wrong. And the Bible is right. I'm going to say it again. If I say something tonight and the Bible says something else, I am wrong and the Bible is right. The Bible is always right. And the Bible says that we were chosen in him before the foundation of the world to be his and to be holy and to be blameless before him in love. That's our position not our condition. Our condition, well, we know what our condition is and we don't like it. But the way God sees us is the position he has given us in Christ Jesus. And what he has begun, he'll finish. Now, the Holy Spirit does not convict anyone who is not in the book. So, and... He will not give you a burden to pray for anyone who is not in the book. Meaning, if God gives you a burden to pray for someone, they will get saved. Because they're in the book. You see, those young people came after me because I was in the book. They wouldn't give up. Every day would say, come, Jesus loves you. Come to church. And I ignored them for over a year. Only people in the book. God will go only after his sheep. He said to Paul the, uh, the apostle when he went to Corinth, he said, I have much people in this city. He said, I have many people in this city that are already in the book, so you stay and find them. Remember, it's in the Bible. I have much people in this city. That's right. Now the Holy Spirit... The Bible says, come, come, I want to show you this. It says, we know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Meaning, you know me already. I am Jesus. I am with you. 
and I will be in you, so I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. And I began to see these scriptures that just came alive. And then I saw this remarkable scripture in John 16, verse 7 and verse 8, where the Lord said, nevertheless, I tell you, it's better. I tell you the truth, it is better. It's more expedient for you that I go away. Because if I don't go away, the comforter will not come. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And then I began to see how the apostles knew Jesus better after he left. They knew more about Jesus after he left than while he was there. Because while he was with them, he was limited. And when he would speak to them, they wondered what he meant. When he talked about the cross, they did not understand. Peter rebuked him for talking about that. When he talked about the resurrection, coming down from the, from the Mount of Transfig Transfiguration, after they saw the glory, think Peter, James, and John saw the glory of God, heard the voice of God, saw Elijah and Moses. And Jesus now tells them about the resurrection, and they're walking behind him saying, what did he mean? What was he talking about? Because they were blinded. Without the Holy Ghost, we can't see it, even if Jesus is there telling us. Think about it. Jesus is there, glorified. The Father's voice is clearly heard. They see the very blessed glory of God. And yet they were blinded. Because the Holy Ghost wasn't there to open their eyes. Without the Holy Spirit... People are blinded. They have no knowledge. They can listen to the Bible over and over. They'll never get it without the Holy Ghost. And look what else it says. He says, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, will come, he'll guide you into all truth. These scriptures came alive in my life in the 70s. He will guide you into all truth. He will not speak of himself. Whatever he will hear in heaven and hear from God the Father and Son, he will show you, he'll, he'll speak. And he'll show you things to come. And he shall glorify me. Now, I had an experience one day. The fellowship of the Holy Ghost was just beyond beautiful. It's, it, it's hard for me today to explain what it was like in my bedroom. My brother Willie was afraid to come in. He and I shared the same room. He slept on the couch downstairs because he was afraid to walk in. The glory of God was lit. Now, I'm not boasting. I'm being truthful. I would shut the lights and there would be light in my room. Literally like brightness in my room while the lights were off. And I always shut the lights. I didn't talk to him without the lights off. Because when the lights came off, my, my room was brighter. It, it actually brightened up. People may think I'm lying. That's their problem. I'm telling you the facts. Angels appeared in my room, staring at me, not saying a word, just puzzled. They gave me the feeling like, why is God bothered with this man? When they would look at me, it was like they didn't understand why God would choose me. They, they had a puzzled look on their face. Not one of them smiled. Not one of them talked to me. They just looked at me with a puzzled look. I can tell you the fact. And anyone who tells you that angels come to have tea with them, they're lying. Angels do not socialize with human beings. They come to do a job and leave. All those angelic visitations you, you hear about, books written, it's only about money. It's just about money. Angels are holy, and they come for a season, for a reason, and they leave. And they don't eat with you or socialize. That's not what the Bible says. For the Bible says clearly, are they not ministering spirits 
sent for the saints. The angel of, of the Lord is around you to protect you, not to have tea with you. Sorry. I've, I've lived too long. I've been in the industry way longer than most people. If you, you don't agree with me, that's your problem. Because the minute you see them as friends, you'll disrespect them. The second you talk about them being buddies to socialize with you, you will lose the awe. You'll lose the awe. How many are listening? Put your hands up high. But here's something else I saw one day that was also remarkable. I'm, I'm, I'm going to send you to your seat in, 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 in a second. But like, you know, it, it, I believe it's, it's helping him too. Oh, yeah. Is this blessing you? Oh. Oh. That's why you were crying. And the day came when I realized not only can I talk to him, but he's exciting. <laughs> Not a dull moment with him. So one day I'm in my room and I'm just having the most glorious time. Just the most glorious time. And suddenly I said, Oh, blessed Holy Spirit. And I began to glorify him and to magnify him. And he left like, just like that. He left the room. And I began crying. I said, Please, why did you leave? And a few minutes later he came back. And literally, I felt someone touch my arm like this. He said, it's about Jesus. It's about Jesus. And I learned and I remembered, he shall glorify me. Anyone who forgets Jesus is making a big mistake. The Holy Spirit is sold on Jesus. And you know people who are filled with the Holy Ghost because they are sold on Jesus. Are you listening? Yes. The Holy Ghost is all about Jesus. He's not about himself. People who talk about the Holy Spirit too much and all the time and forget Jesus, that's not biblical. Because if you're really filled with the Holy Spirit, it's all about Jesus. That's it. He shall glorify me. And he needs our fellowship. I was in England with the group Shekinah, 1974, summer of 74. We stayed in homes of YWAMers, people from YWAM. We stayed in a lovely home, and they took, there were 63 young people, and three would go to each house, sometimes a little more, and I was with some of the young people in that home, in the room praying, having the most glorious time. And I hear the lady of the house who had prepared a, a beautiful breakfast Benny, breakfast is ready, coming down. But I'm having the most glorious time. Benny, can you hear me up there? And I could hear her, of course. And I said, I got to go, but I promise I'll come right back. <laughs> and I literally heard him say, just a few more minutes. Oh. Now, that happened to me. And I'm thinking, he needs me that much? He is that lovely to want me. And I ate breakfast. I ran right up. I said, did I miss anything? Lord, did I miss anything? It happened again one time when Jim Pointer came to take me to service. Jim was a wonderful saint of God that affected my life. A free Methodist minister who used to go and sing and preach. He was a short man, but played the accordion beautifully. He taught me all the hymns. All the hymns I know today, he would sing them to me with tears running down his cheeks, that precious man. So he came to pick me up because he was going to preach in a little church in the country, in Canada, up there outside Toronto. And he was waiting, and I could hear him, you know, honking on the horn, you know. And and the same thing happened. I was in fellowship with the, with, with the Holy Spirit. And, and I said, I got to go. I Please, I got to go. Because Jim was just, and I left the room, and I get in the car, and Jim begins to weep, and, and now he's, he isn't moving, and he starts, hallelujah, and he starts worshiping. I said, Jim, 
Are you okay? He said, when you walked in, the Lord walked in with you. And he's, he's crying now, worshiping the Lord, and he forgot all about his meeting. I said, well, we got to go. And there was, a, there was a speaker there that night. He was a little dry, I must say. But, but wait, wait, wait. Jim was playing. He played the organ and sang, and then they had the guest speaker. This little country church, no more than maybe 50 people there. I'm sitting with Jim on the front row, and I'm beaming. I'm beaming. And the, and the guest speaker comes down, and he says, young man, I don't know who you are. But he said, you pulled it right out of me. I said, why? He said, nobody was paying attention. He said, the, he said, the joy of the Lord on your face kept me preaching. Because that's what happens. People see the, the, the presence of God in us. How many of you want to walk like that? Put your hands up high. Well, this is your night. Yes. I believe you're going to go home, get to your bedroom, and meet the Holy Ghost. Yes. But he's a person. Now, look, I have been many times to a funeral home looking at a dead body of somebody. You couldn't say that dead body is a person. They are not a person because the person left. You cannot call a body of a dead somebody a person. They're just a shell. They're the house of the person who used to live there. I like to say it's the earth suit. But the man is gone. The woman is gone. No, the Holy Spirit doesn't have a body. Because we are his body. But he is a person. What makes a person? Three things. Number one, intellect. Number two, will. Number three, emotions. A person thinks. It's what they think. A person wants what they want. And a person feels emotions. The Holy Spirit has intellect because the Bible says... He searcheth the deep things of God. What intellect? In, in the book of Romans 8.27, it says he has a mind. He has intellect. For it says in scripture, and he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the spirit. He has a mind. Jim, come sit over there next to Pastor Dan with your microphone. I'm going to give you scriptures to read to Help me go a little faster. He has a will. 1 Corinthians 12, 11. Let's go with the, with the scripture on the, on the screen. It says what? It says, but all these work at that one and sell the same spirit, dividing to every man as he will. He has a will. And he also has emotions. In Romans 15, verse 30, it talks about the love of the spirit. What Paul says to the church to pray, he says, I beseech you, brethren, for the Lord Jesus and for the love of the Spirit. We all know God the Father loves us and sent his Son. We know Jesus loves us and loved us and loves us to die for us. But do we also remember that it's the Holy Spirit's love that drew us to the Lord? It's the, it's the love of the Holy Spirit that convicted us, that is keeping us right now, that has made Jesus more real to us than, than our, our, our own life. Think about the fact, 2,000 years ago, the crowd saw him, but he was not real to them. The crowd saw him. They did not love him. Today, we have not seen him, yet we know him and love him. How is that possible? By the Spirit. How can someone be more real to you than your mother, whom you've never seen? More real to you than your friends? More real to you than your own skin? Jesus is real. How many of you say Jesus is real in your life? Put your, who made him real? The Holy Ghost. How many of you love him with all your hearts? Who gave you that love? The Holy Spirit. For it says, having not seen him, yet we love him. Because he is the Holy Spirit. 
Now let's go, please, to Isaiah 6. Jim, you're going to read Isaiah 6, verse 8, 9, 10. And dear Pastor Dan, you're going to read the book of Acts, chapter 28, 25 through 27. He is God Almighty. He is not it. He is God, equal to the Father, equal to the Son. Yet a different person. Don't try to understand that. Your minds are too small to comprehend God. We are limited mentally to know God. Don't try to understand the Trinity. You won't understand the Trinity. For he is God. Because if you understood him, you have brought him down to your level. If you understood him, you'll stop worshiping him. This is one thing we don't understand, but one day we'll know as we are known. But we do know from Scripture, one God, not three gods, one God, three persons. Say one God. Not three gods, one God. Say the Lord, our God, the Lord is one, simple. And the Bible says clearly, hear, O Israel, Shema Israel, the Lord our God, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. The Lord our God, the Lord is one, one God, three persons. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And the Bible makes it clear that the Holy Spirit is third, mentioned third, because of his work. It is the Father, it is the Father who sent his Son. It is Jesus who came and died on the cross. It's the Holy Ghost who reveals him. So we receive of the Father, not from, of the Father. Say of the Father. Say again, we receive of the Father. Yeah, that's what it means when Jesus said, receive of me. You cannot receive from God, you receive of God. Come, I'm going to show you this, Jim. So Jesus said, And the Father says, I am life. So if you want life, you receive of him. You receive him, not from him. So if you want life, you take the whole person. If you want healing, you take the whole person. You want salvation, you have to take the whole person. You cannot walk away. No, you you are of him, not from him. So... Give me your Bible. There, there. Hold your Bible. So the Lord says, I am. And he gives us life. We take his life. Okay? He is life. We cannot receive without receiving him. Whether it's healing or miracles. He is. Say he is. For he said, I am. He didn't say, I have. He said, I am. He didn't say, I have bread. He said, I am the bread. He didn't say, I have water. He said, I am the water of life. He didn't say, I have a map. He said, I am the way. He didn't say, I have a light. He said, I am the light of the world. If you're hungry, he doesn't say, I have bread. He says, I am the bread. You're thirsty. He's the water. If you need need peace, he says, I am peace. I'm the prince of peace. If you're dead, he says, I am the resurrection and the life. He is. He doesn't have. He is. Satan has. Jesus is. Now remember, if you have, it means someone gave it to you. If you have, it means it had a beginning. If you have, it has an end. Satan never said, I am. He said, I have. 
which means he has a beginning and he will have an end. But Jesus said, I am the beginning. I am the end. I am the alpha. I am the omega. I am the bread of life, the water of life, the resurrection and the, and the life. I'm the way. I'm the truth. I'm the life. I am. Take your seat. What Jesus is. Now look, when Mary gave birth to the Son of God, hear me. She did not hold the baby. The baby was holding her. Because in him we live. In him we move. And in him we have our being. <laughs> look at that. I love. Invite me back to God. Now I'm loving this. The cross did not hold him. He held the cross. The nails didn't hold him. He held the nails. And how can the grave hold the one that's holding it? How can the grave hold the one that's holding the grave? How can death hold life? That's why he destroyed death. Take your seats. He is because he walked on water. Listen to me. The water didn't hold him. He was holding the water. That's why he could walk on it. Yeah. And it is the Holy Spirit who reveals all that to us. So he is God. The Holy Ghost is God Almighty, equal to the Father, equal to the Son. So it says in Isaiah 6, 8, 9, 10, please. Jim. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Who shall I send and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. And he it's said, It's the Lord who said, The Lord. Keep going, Jim. And he said, Go and tell this people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not, and see ye indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy. And shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their hearts. All right, now let's go to the book of Acts 28. Now, we just read those wonderful words in Isaiah, where the Lord spoke to Isaiah. And Paul said in verse 25, And when they agreed not among themselves, they departed after that Paul had spoken one word. So well spake the, the Holy, Holy Ghost. Ghost by Isaiah. Isaiah says the Lord spoke and Paul said the Holy Ghost spoke. The same scripture. Why? Because he is Jehovah. He is God Almighty. You put Isaiah 6 and Acts 28, you see it's the same God. Called the Holy Ghost. He is God Almighty. Yes, and the Bible tells us He is omnipresent. Look at Psalm, please. 139, 7, 8, 9. God Almighty, the Holy Ghost, who is omnipresent. Please, Jim. No, you did it for me there, preacher. Psalm 139, verse 7, 8, 9. Whither shall I go from thy That's spirit? why I like <laughs> Whither shall I go from thy spirit? That's why I oh, love the way you <laughs> Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. Yeah. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. Keep going. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me. But he and said, thy... where shall I flee from your spirit? Where will I go? Why do you speak in tongues while I'm preaching? Where shall I flee? But I love it. Don't change. Don't change. Don't change. You can speak in tongues all you want with your yellow shirt and gray suit. I don't care. Where shall I flee from your spirit? The Holy Ghost is omnipresent. But look what also it says in 1 Corinthians 2, verse 10. Please, Captain Dan, read for me. 1 Corinthians 2, 10, and then you're going to read Isaiah 40, 13, 14. But let's go. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. 
For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. You can see that all the way back there? With pleasure. You have marvelous sight. Thank now, you, sir. let's go to Isaiah 40. But you see, the omniscient, he knows the very depth of God. Really That's does. incredible oh, yeah. knowledge. Now look at Isaiah chapter 40, 13, 14. Then let's go. Who has erected the spirit of the Lord, or being his counselor, hath taught him? Who hath known? With whom? Read, wait, wait, read that again. Who hath directed the spirit of the Lord, or being his counselor, hath taught him? That's right, keep going. With whom took he counsel, and who instructed him, and taught him in the path of judgment, and taught him knowledge, and showed to him the way of understanding? Keep going. Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket. Before him, the nations before the Holy Ghost are like a drop in a bucket before oh, the Holy Ghost. Who has known the mind of the Holy Spirit? Huh? Who hath known the ways of the Spirit? It says, it is the Holy Ghost. It's talking about in Isaiah 40. Because he is Jehovah God Almighty. Keep reading. Give me the bucket. <laughs> Keep going. Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket and are counted as the small dust of the balances. Behold, he taketh up the aisles as a, as very, a very little, little thing. thing. Keep going. And Lebanon is not sufficient to burn. Means, Your, means all the animals in Lebanon are not enough as sacrifices. Keep nor going. the beasts thereof sufficient for a burnt offering. Keep going. All nations before him are as nothing. And, and they are less than nothing. And they are counted to him less than nothing and vanity. Who is that talking about there? The Holy Ghost. <laughs> God Almighty. God the Holy Spirit. Yes, yes, yes. And in, in Luke 135, he is called the Spirit of the Highest. The power of the highest. He is the power of the Trinity. He is the power of the Trinity. God spoke it. Jesus did it. And the Holy Ghost is the power behind it. He is the power of the Godhead. Tonight, you came into this building. Someone said, turn the lights on. Someone turned the switch but the power came from what? The generator. Yeah. The Father said, turn the lights on. Jesus put the switch up. The Holy Ghost is the generator. <laughs> he is the power of Almighty God. He is the generator of heaven. He is the power of God. He is so mighty that he took God and turned him into a seed. Think about that. He is so mighty that he turned God into a seed and put that seed in the womb of a virgin. And the angel said, that holy thing within thee is the Son of God. He is called the child of the Holy Ghost. If, if the Holy Spirit can turn God into a seed, think what he can do with you. He took the Lord God who inhabits the heavens and earth, who is the I am, who's, who has no beginning and no end. The heavens of heavens cannot contain him. He took him and turned him into a little seed in the womb of a little young lady named Mary from Nazareth. Yeah, yeah. Born in Bethlehem. He is from everlasting to everlasting. Hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, lift your hands and thank God for the Holy Ghost. Thank God for the blessed, blessed Holy Spirit. Look at verse 2, Micah 5, 2. Come on, read that for me. Micah 5, 2. But thou, Bethlehem Ephrata, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler, ruler in Israel. Whose goings forth, forth have, have been, been from, from old, old, from, from everlasting. everlasting. My, my. How about Isaiah 9, 6, my brother? 
For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. Get on that instrument quickly, And the Jim. government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. That child is God. Yes. That son is God. Yes. It's the Holy Ghost who oh. came upon Mary the Virgin and conceived God in the body of Jesus Christ. Yes, 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 yes. In the person of Jesus Christ, God in the flesh by the power of the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. It was the Holy Spirit who took God, turned him into a seed in the womb of a woman who became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the power of the Holy Ghost. Unto us a child is born, Jim. From Handel's Messiah, Jim. If you don't know it, don't worry about it. The coming. All right, just wait a minute. Take your seats. I gotta keep. I gotta keep teaching. The coming of the. Somebody can. Can somebody please shout hallelujah? It's not by might, it's not by power, by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Next to the coming of the Lord to earth, the coming of the Holy Spirit occupies the second highest importance in the Bible. Because Jesus came to give us life. Yet it is the Holy Spirit that executes it. That administers it. That gives us the benefits of the life Jesus yes. is. Yeah. Jesus is life. But we would not know him without the Holy Spirit. He is called the Spirit of life. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. We would not know the, the, the plan of redemption without him. He's made Jesus more real in our skin and our life. Sit down, all of you. He's the one who created the world. God Almighty, the Spirit of God, moved upon the face of the waters and God spoke into the breath. Now hear me well. A lot of people today confess the word. The word of God was not spoken till the spirit moved. For the spirit moved and then God said, let there be light. He spoke into the spirit's move. People that confess without the spirit speaking and moving in them will see no results. You can say I'm healed till you're dead because you won't be healed. You, you, you can confess scripture and it's all dead for there's no wind behind it. There's no wind behind it. Without the breath, nobody can even hear you. God did not say, read my lips. He said, hear my voice. You can't hear a voice without breath behind it. The Holy Ghost is the breath of God's voice. He's the breath of God. Are you listening to me? God never said, read my lips. We need the breath to hear his voice. And the breath is called the Holy Ghost. Without the breath, there's no delivery. Imagine if I was now moving my lips. Nobody would even would understand the thing I said. How, how would you even hear me if I hope? But I'm not, there's no breath. He is the breath of God. It's the breath that carries the voice of God. The breath that carries his word to your heart. And God spoke through the breath. The spirit of God moved and God said, let there be light. When God speaks, He always speaks through the Spirit. And so it says in Job 26, 13. Read that for us. Take your seats, please. I love it when you're standing and excited. I love Ghana. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Go, go, go. Job, Job 26, please. By His Spirit, He hath garnished. By, by His Spirit. By His Spirit. Because it says in Genesis 1, 2. The Spirit moved upon the face of the waters, and then God spoke. And now Job said, what? 
By his, by his spirit. spirit, he hath garnished the heavens. That's right. His hand hath formed the crooked serpent. That's because he is the creator. And Job 33 verse 4, the Holy Spirit is here the creator. The spirit of God hath made me. The breath of the Almighty hath given me life. Yes. Now, 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 I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something. Come here, Dan. Come here. Come, 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 Dan. Come, brother Dan. Blow. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Blow and blow till you can't blow. <laughs> now, that was about 10 seconds. The breath of God is everlasting. He doesn't stop blowing upon your life. He doesn't stop releasing the breath upon your mind and your heart and your body and your future. In his breath, there is life eternal. That's why the word has no end. God's word has no end because the breath carries it eternally. So your breath, my breath can only last, what, 10 seconds? The bigger you are, maybe a few more seconds. The smaller you are, like Jim and I, maybe five seconds. But God's breath is eternal. It never stops breathing. He never stops breathing on you. When he breathed upon man, he became flesh. Jesus came and breathed upon the apostles. They were born again. And the breath came again on the day of Pentecost like a mighty wind. I have news for you. The breath is here tonight in Accra, Ghana. His name is the Holy Ghost. That's why I said, breathe upon me, breath of God, earlier. Play it again. Give me a good high key, please. He is the breath of Almighty God. Breathe upon me, breath of God. Whoa. Breathe upon me. Come on, tell him. Spirit of the Lord, as I lift my hands in surrender to your name, most high. I'm healing, healing across to your spirit. I'm walking in your love. Jesus, I am. And we are God because of the breath in you. Jesus, Jesus I Jesus, I adore your holy name. Take your seats. It's the Holy Ghost, according to Psalm 104.30, that renews the face of the world. The Holy Spirit is the one. He's the one. Now he, turn to Zechariah there, quickly there, my brother. Mal bakul al metro tegel bekin tiramelo. I'm feeling fire in my soul right now. Would you read for me Zechariah 12 verse 1, please, Dan? Let's go. The burden of the word of the Lord for Israel, saith the Lord, which stretcheth forth the heavens and layeth the foundations of the earth. And formed the spirit of man within him. Stop. He formed the spirit of man, man within, him. within him. That's why, Dan, that's why, saints of God, your spirit cannot die. Ah. Because the Holy Spirit is the one who formed your spirit. Read that again, Captain Dan. Read the that burden again. Of the word of the Lord for Israel, saith the Lord, which stretcheth forth the heavens and layeth the foundations of the earth and formeth the spirit of man within That's him. That's why the spirit of man goes upward uh -huh. and animals go downward. Woo. The spirit cannot die. For God formed it within you. And when you read Ecclesiastes 12, 7, look what it says. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was. And the spirit shall return unto God. 
You cannot die. Stop fearing death. Your spirit walks out of your body. You know, if God decides tonight to take me home, don't try to resurrect me. Because I will walk out of my body. And I will look at it laying there still. And I will see you all and hear you all. And I will fly away. That day is coming with all of us. All of us. You are going to come out right of that suit. <laughs> the yellow shirt will stay behind. And the suit will stay behind. And the shoes will stay behind. And the socks will stay behind. Look at that. And that's right. And the towel will stay behind. But God will give you a new robe as you come out of that body. White shining as the light. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and thank him, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not done preaching yet. I just want you to thank him. That's all. Just, just thank him for who he is. Take your seats. Hallelujah. And, and he's the one who instructed the prophets of old. He was there. Think about this. The creator of all things. I just showed you that he is the creator. He's God Almighty. But let me show you in the life of the prophets. Okay, Jim, get back here quickly with your mic. Run. Come on. Zechariah 7.12. Come on, Dan. Zechariah 7.12. And Jim, 2 Peter 1, 20 and 21. Yea, but first, they, Zechariah 7.12. Yea, they made their hearts as an adamant stone, lest they should hear the law. And the words which the Lord of hosts hath sent in his spirit yeah by the former prophets. So who was speaking through the former prophets? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. And now you go to Nehemiah 9.30, please, there, Dan and Jim. 2 Peter 1, 20 and 21. Nehemiah 9.10, right after that. Let's go. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation. Keep going, next verse. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but the holy men of God spake as, as they, they were, were moved, moved by, by the, Holy the Ghost. So every word in the Old Testament was given by the Holy Ghost through the prophets. How about Nehemiah chapter 9? Come on there, Dad. Yet ne many years didn't thou forbear them and testify. Isaiah 48, 16 for you. Keep going, Dan, one more time. Yet many years didst thou forbear them and testifiest against them by the Spirit in thy prophets. He was testifying against them by his Spirit through the prophets, through Isaiah and through Jeremiah and Ezekiel and Daniel and Hosea and Joel. It was the Holy Ghost speaking through the Old Testament's prophets. And look at Isaiah, please, Jim. Let's read Isaiah 48, 16 that says, Come ye near me, hear ye this. I have not spoken in secret from the beginning, from the time that it was. There am I, and now the Lord God has sent his me. Spirit has sent. His spirit has yeah. sent me. This is Jesus talking yeah. that the spirit sent him. Read that again, Jim. Here, come hear ye unto me, hear ye this. I have not spoken in secret from the beginning, from the time that then was. There am I, because there this is I. Messiah talking. And he said what? He said, now the Lord, the Lord God, God, meaning the Father, and his spirit, spirit has sent me. me. How many are seeing the Holy Ghost? A lot clearer right now. But in the life of Jesus, in the life of Jesus, let's go to Matthew 118, please, Dan. Jesus needed the Holy Ghost. For there we see something powerful in Matthew 118, please. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, therefore they came together. She was found with child of, of the, the Holy, Holy Ghost. Ghost. Wait a minute. Child of? Child of? Then the Holy Ghost is his father. Uh -huh. He is God. I'm trying to show you he's God. 
And the Bible tells us in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, Dan, and then in Matthew 4, 1, please. Now God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Luke 4, 1 after that. Go ahead. Who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. He says, we, we, we just read, conceived by the Holy Ghost, anointed by the Holy Ghost. Yes, sir. Jesus, anointed by the Spirit. Yes. And now it says in Luke 4, verse 1, Jim, please. And, and you're going to go to Luke 4, 18, 19, right after him. Go ahead. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit. So not only born, not only anointed, but led by the Spirit. Led by the Spirit. Okay, now then, how about same chapter, verse 18 and verse 19 says what? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because uh -huh. he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set in liberty them that it's are It's the work of the Holy Ghost Holy through God. Christ Jesus. Read that again. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because, because he hath anointed me to going. preach the gospel to so, the poor. So so, so who was preaching the gospel? The Holy Spirit at Through, the point. Wait, hold it. Who was preaching the gospel? Who was speaking through Christ Jesus? The Holy Ghost. Yes. Keep going. To preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal, heal the, the broken bro heart. Who was healing the broken heart through Holy Jesus? Ghost. The Holy Ghost. Keep going. To preach deliverance to the captives. Who was bringing deliverance to the captives through the Christ Holy Jesus? Ghost. Holy Ghost. Keep going. And recovering of sight to the blind. The Holy Ghost. Where he is, miracles happen. It is the Holy Spirit. Hebrews 9, 14. Please quickly there, Dan. It is the Holy Spirit who is eternal also. Jesus offered himself through the eternal spirit. Read that for me. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from, from dead works, works to, to serve, serve the, the living. living God? Offered himself. When? He offered himself before the foundation of the world. God the Father had said, Son, will you go? And Jesus said, Father, just a second. He looked at the Holy Ghost and said, for me to go, I need you to go with me. I need your power. I need you to turn me into a man. I will be a man. I need you to anoint me, guide and lead me, and resurrect me from the dead. And he came right on time at the, in the river Jordan and baptized him and anointed him. Right on time, fulfilling his promise to him. It is the Holy Ghost, eternal Holy Ghost, who came upon the life of the Son of God and resurrected Jesus from the dead. The very words he spoke in John 6, he said, my words are spirit. My words are life. Meaning the scriptures he gave, the sermons he preached were all by the spirit. And then he rose from the dead. Let's go to Romans, please, Dan. Chapter 1, verse 4, and then chapter 8, 11. But look at chapter 1, verse 4. And declared to be the Son of God with power, according to the spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead. And when people say that Jesus is not the only way to heaven, they don't know the Bible. My question to anyone who believes that Jesus is only one way is this. Who else was raised from the dead? Who else died and rose again? No, it's a lie. There is... Listen here. The Bible is clear. It's not fact to say Jesus is one way to heaven. Because there is no other way but Christ. 
He said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. Why? Because he died and rose again. And that is the guarantee. He is the son of God. My son Joshua came one day to me. He said, Mom. He said, Dad, my friends want to know how come Jesus is the only way to heaven. I said, because you tell your friends he's the only one who died and rose again. And that's what gives him the, 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 the that's why he's, he's declared to be the, the, you know, the son of God. The only one. I said, who else rose? You ask your friends, who else died and rose? He said, it's a good answer. So, well, you go tell your friend. The resurrection qualifies him to be the savior of the world. And Romans 8, 11 says, But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in now, you. Now, the Bible tells me in the book of Acts, I wanted to read for us Acts chapter 1, verse 1 and verse 2. That he gave the last instructions he gave, he gave by the Spirit. Now here's the, resurrect, the resurrected Lord giving last instructions, still needing the Holy Ghost. If Jesus needed yeah. the Holy Ghost after he rose, yeah. how much more we need him mama, before mama, our mama. resurrection. Can I say it again? Yeah. If Jesus needed the Holy Spirit before his resurrection and after his resurrection. How much we need him now and after our resurrection. Read that for me. The former treaties have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up. After that he threw the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. Now here it's clear. Through the Spirit he gave commandments. But something else people don't realize. When he returns, he'll need the Holy Ghost again. Because he will destroy Antichrist by his breath. And who is his breath? But the Holy Ghost. How you and I need the Holy Ghost. Lift your hands, say, I need you, bless the Lord. And he is the Lord. But the Spirit is the Lord, 2 Corinthians 3 says. He is the Lord. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Hallelujah. Now the Spirit is the Lord. And where the Spirit is, there it is, 2 Corinthians 3.17. The Lord is the Spirit. Lift your hands say, you are the Lord. You are God. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being with me and in me. Never leave me. You're the one who makes Jesus real in my life. Never leave me. Never forsake me. It is he that regenerates us. John 3, 3 to 6. It is he that baptizes us in one body. 1 Corinthians, 2, 1 Corinthians 12, 12 and 13. It is he that indwells us. 1 Corinthians 3, 16. It is he that seals us. Ephesians 1, 13 and 14. But I'd like you to read Ephesians 3.16. It is the one, he's the one who strengthens us within. Read that for me. That he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit. And he's he the one who infills us. Read Ephesians 5.18, please. And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the spirit. Now, Dan, my dad used to tell us kids when we would walk to school, we would walk about close to four to five miles to school every morning. And my dad always said to us children, I was a little boy when I would walk to school with my brother and my sister. 
And my father would say, now, if you ever see a drunk man cross the street to the next, to the next side. I never went up to a drunk man and said, let me smell you. He walked drunk. He looked drunk. I didn't have to smell him to know if he's drunk. So everything about that man was drunk. I knew it because alcohol controlled him. It is just as silly to say, let me hear you speak in tongues. Prove to me you have the Holy Ghost. Talk in tongues. No, my brother. It's the way they live. Uh, yes, sir. It's the way they walk. It's the way they behave. By their fruits, you'll know them, not by their gifts. By their fruits, you'll know them. The fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, meekness, tenderness, faith. Hallelujah. And he liberates us. Romans 8 verse 2. It's the law of the spirit of life. Read that for me. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from, from the, the law, law of, of sin. sin and death. And look at Romans 8 14. Not only liberates, but he even directs us. Read it for, for me. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And how about this Acts chapter 13 verse 2. He's the one that calls us into the ministry. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate, Separate me, Barnabas me. Yeah. and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. Look how involved he is in our life. My, my. He's the one who gives us new birth in John 3. He's the one who baptizes us into one body. In 1 Corinthians 12, he indwells us in 1 Corinthians 3. He seals us in Ephesians. He strengthens us in Ephesians. He fills us with in Ephesians. He liberates us in Romans 8. He directs us in Romans 8. And he calls us to service and acts. But look what else. Not only does he call us into service, he guides us where to go and not to go. Yeah. Look with me, please, at Acts chapter 8. 27, 28, 29. He directed. He directed. Keep going. And he arose and went. And behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge My of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was returning and sitting in the chariot, read Isaiah the prophet. Then and the, the Spirit, Spirit said, said unto, unto Philip, him, go near. Go near. And, and he ran, him. and he ran, and he ran. He was guided. He knew if he missed that moment, he'll never come back this way again. Ooh, yeah. Not only does he call us into service, he guides us into service. He tells us where to go and not go. And when to go. In 1 Thessalonians 1.5, he empowers us. Let's read that scripture, 1 Thessalonians. For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power, in power and, and in, in the, the Holy, Holy Ghost. Ghost. And in much assurance. As but you it's know, the power of God that gives us assurance of the truth preached. And how about Galatians 5, 22 and 23? That he produces within us Christ-likeness, the Holy Ghost, for the fruit of the Spirit, not from the Spirit, of the Spirit, is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. That's the Holy Ghost. He not only calls us into service, leads us into service, empowers us in service, but he produces Christ-likeness in our life. It's his work. And I love Ephesians 1.17, revealing the riches of God to us. Please read that for me. That Ephesians. the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom. Lift your hands and ask for that. The spirit of wisdom and revelation, revelation in, in the, the knowledge, knowledge of 
Yeah. Yeah. Keep going. Keep going. The eyes of, of your, your understanding being enlightened. Only by the Spirit can we have our eyes enlightened. That ye may know what is that hope of His Only calling. by the Spirit can we know the hope of His calling. And what the riches of the glory of Only His by the Spirit we can know the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the saints. You wrote your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. He marked your life. He set his heart upon your life. And he said, mine forever. It's amazing why sometimes a relative and a friend was not saved. Things were all crazy to believe. I had an uncle who got very angry with me when I said, you're a sinner. He said, how dare you call me a sinner? I said, uncle, the Bible says all have sinned. I was witnessing to him. I was witnessing to him. I said, uncle, the Bible says you're a sinner. I didn't say it like that I think. I said, the Bible says you're a sinner. He got so angry. He said, why? I said, the Bible says so. He said, I'm a good man. I never hurt anybody. I didn't do anything wrong to anybody. How can he say I'm a sinner? I said, the Bible says you're a sinner. He became so angry. He, he, he began to insult God. He said, God would send me to hell? I said, without Jesus? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, it was, I might as well be, have been talking to that speaker right here. He could not see it. When his wife was dying with cancer, dying with cancer, my mother went to pray for her. And she said, I don't want your prayer. My mom said, you're dying. Can't you call on the Lord? She said, I don't want to. But you're going to die. You're only minutes away from death. Literally minutes away. She said, no, I don't want to talk to him. I never have, and I don't really need him. And she died. And my mom said to us, she said, she looked like the devil when she died. Why is it? Not in the book of life. That's why. There are people that you know, they'll never see it. They'll never understand it. They think you're crazy to believe it. Why? They're not predestined to be his. God saw their hearts before the foundation of the world. He saw them rejecting the gospel before the foundation of the world. And he did not write their names in the book of life. Think with me a minute. The apostles did not see the resurrection happen. They weren't there in the morning when the angel moved the stone. They weren't there when Jesus came out of the grave. They believed when they saw him. But they did not see him rise. Think about the day will come when the whole world, the whole world will see two men resurrect from the dead. Two men. Elijah and Enoch. That's what I believe. Some believe it's Moses, but I don't believe that Moses can die twice. It's appointed unto men to die once. If Moses should die twice, then it breaks scripture. And if Enoch should not die, then Enoch would be the first fruit of the resurrection. But Enoch cannot be the first fruit of the resurrection because Jesus is. So Enoch has to die. So it is Enoch and Elijah who will be killed by Antichrist and raised from the dead and ascend to heaven and the whole world will still blaspheme God. Why? They're not in the book. See, without the convicting power of the Holy Ghost, men will never accept the gospel. You are a treasure. You are a chosen generation, 
a royal priesthood, a holy nation, that you might show for the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness. For you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people who should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness, out of darkness, out of darkness into his marvelous light, into his marvelous light. Lift your hands to him. Come on. For we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that we show for the praises of him who has called us out of darkness, out of darkness, out of darkness, into his marvelous light into his marvelous lift your hands to him thank you Lord for saving my soul thank you Lord for making me whole Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation so rich and free. Jesus, I just want to thank you. Tell him, say. Jesus, I just want 